Isaiah chapter 5, starting at verse 3. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem and men of Judah, judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. What could I have been, <clears throat> what could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Wherefore, when I looked that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. And now go to, I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will take away the hedge thereof, and it shall be eaten up, and break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down, and I will lay it waste. It shall not be pruned nor digged, but there shall come up briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah his pleasant plant. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. Woe unto them that join house to house, that lay field to field, till there be no place, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. In mine ears, said the Lord of hosts, of, tr of a truth, how many houses shall be desolate? Even mm, of a truth, many houses shall be desolate, even great and fair without inhabitant. Yea, ten acres of a vineyard shall yield one bath, and the seed of an homer shall yield an open. Woe unto them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue until night, till wine inflame them. Mm, mm, mm. Wow. Now, I'm going to continue reading, but let me stop here real quick. There are times when God starts to deal with his people. And we don't really... Well, none of us like that. It's not a good feeling knowing that Papa Son is getting ready to take our hand and, and strut us over to the woodshed. That's not a happy feeling. I used to remember times when I would get in trouble doing something I wasn't supposed to do. And the kids would say, your father's out here waiting for you. The terror that would come over me. You know... One thing I knew, I knew I had a whooping coming. But you know, here's the sad part. Most of today's society has no fear of God. And one of the reasons is because he is so merciful. He is so long-suffering. There may be things I don't do as well as I should. But one thing I try to make sure of is that I stay on God's good side. I never want him to have to take me to the woodshed. That is a whooping you will never forget. You forget the pain that your father spanked you with or your mother. You forget that. That's not an internal psychological issue. You know, not when it's done correctly, biblically. But I'm telling you, when God gets through with you, that's an experience you will never forget. One day I was driving home and I had just got through doing something I had no business doing. And I felt the anger of the Lord. I can still feel what that felt like. That was scary, y'all. That scared me. That scared me straight, just like the... The, the prison movies where they would say scared straight, I was scared straight. That straightened me out real quick. See, I don't do booty whoopings. I don't do wood shit. I don't, you know, homie don't play that. And I am, as much as I love God, as much as I'm comfortable with him, and I even joke with him, I don't play with that side of him. <clears throat> that can be angry with me. I didn't, no, 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 no. I was afraid of my father. You know I'm afraid of my heavenly father. 
So that is probably one of the reasons why so many born again Christians live a slack life. They do what they want to do. They they try for a week and then they slip for a day. And then they try for three days and they slip for four days. And it's an up and down yo-yo walk with the Lord. One, as the song says, sometimes I feel like a nut, sometimes I don't. And that is the way we live our lives. We feel like this one minute, then we don't. Then we want to be holy the next minute. Then we don't. Then we want to dabble another minute. Then we don't. Then we want to please our Lord and Savior. Then we don't. Because we want to please self. So it's a yo-yo experience. But we think because we haven't been sent to jail, because we haven't been thrown in the hospital with some crazy disease, that God is winking at what we're doing. We think it's okay with him, but it's not. If if you could just get the severity of what God says in his word, when he warns us to straighten up and fly right, he is not playing y'all. It's, it's not a suggestion. It's not a, uh, it's not a plea. It's a command. And see, because you're not paying the piper now does not mean that that bill is not due. Does not mean that you don't have a price to pay for what you just did. We all have prices to pay in this life. We don't all pay them in eternity. Some prices we pay right here. Some of you know what I mean. You think about some of the things you've done. Excuse me. You think about some of the things you've done on this planet in the land of the living that's here, the here and now. Mm -hmm. And you pay the price. You either did time or you got pregnant or you got a disease or you lost everything. You went bankrupt. Everything was repossessed. Whatever the case is, there are choices we make. And it pays to be merciful a lot. Because when your time comes to pay a bill that you created in this life, in the land of the living, going against God's will, you can really plead for his mercy if you have been freely showing mercy to others. It's not guaranteed you're going to get it because God wants you to learn some things. And some things he knows, like my father used to tell me, some things you'll have to learn the hard way. It's just life. It's just the, the, the uh, nature of the beast, so to speak, the human being. Try not to have to learn everything the hard way. God doesn't want that. God wants to bless you. He makes a covenant. He wants to fulfill his covenant, not his judgment. But unfortunately, unfortunately, we play him for a patsy. And when judgment time comes, and we have to feel the severity of that pain. We hate him. But he's not the one. He warned us. See, that's the thing I love about our loving God. He will warn us. Let me give you an example. I'm trying to take my time with this. Years ago when I was... Way back in the day, over half a century ago, all you peanut gallery folks, hush up, hush. Mm -hmm. I was probably maybe 22, 21, not saved, not thinking about being saved. And I was sitting in the car with my friend, my buddy. We were in, this was funny. 
we were in her neighborhood <clears throat> and she frequented, <clears throat> excuse me, she frequented the store. Now, this is what I want you to hear. In this store, she used to love to shoplift. She got away with it left and right, left and right. And she was telling me how well she got away with it. She had great big pocketbooks. They was big as suitcases. And she was telling me that um, now both of us made enough money. We didn't need to shoplift. But, you know, it was fun getting away with free stuff. Uh -huh. So, sure enough, we talked about doing it. I was over visiting her house. She pulled out an extra pocketbook, a real great big one for me. And we decided to go in and take some spoils. We did it once. Maybe a couple of months later, we did it again. A couple of months later, we did it again. I don't know how many times, three, four times. This one time, <clears throat> this is what stopped this dead in its tracks. See, God is very loving, very loving, even to the knuckleheads that aren't in Christ yet. He loves his people. He loves his creation. He is love. He can't help himself. So here I am with my friend. We're sitting in the car. And we're, we're puffing on our cigarettes, and she's getting ready to jump out. And I want to finish my cigarette. That was one day in my life I thank God for a smoking habit because I was sitting there smoking, and I didn't want to put it out. I wanted to finish it before I got out of the car. <laughs> that cigarette in me, <clears throat> in the car with our music playing, and Marty's in the store. She's doing her thing. So, all of a sudden, this thought process comes. Now, I didn't have a Bible to read like I read to you. I didn't know scripture. I didn't go to church. I was raised by heathens. <laughs> okay, so here we are. I'm, she's in the store. I'm in the car. And I'm puff, puff, puffing away and jamming to the music. And all of a sudden, this dialogue starts going through my mind. <clears throat> it was crystal clear, y'all. I used to say I never heard the Lord's voice. I didn't realize till after I was saved that was God's voice. You are going to go in the store, and you're going to get everything you want. And when you go up to the cash register, you're going to pay for a few things. And you're going to make it through the cash register to the door. When you get into the door, into the opening of the door, they are going to call the security guard and stop you. When they stop you, they're going to call the police. The police are going to come. They're going to handcuff you. They're going to arrest you, and you will do time. I was mortified. I was frightened to death. I was like, oh, my goodness. It was so crystal clear. I could not ignore that. I wasn't afraid. I wasn't nervous. It was, an, it was easy pickings. So I went in the store put my cigarette out, went in the store. I said, hey, girl, I found her in the store. I said, mm -mm, I'm going to wait for you in the car. She said, why? I said, this is what a voice told me in my head. And I told her exactly what was told to me. And she looked at me and she said, hmm, well, I don't think I'm going to be a fool. I think I'm going to take heed to she said, I'll meet you out in the car. I said, okay, later, Gator. And I took my little happy hips, bought me a soda and went on out, sat in the car and waited for her. She came out. We drove on back to her house. And guess what? Neither one of us ever did time. Why? We heard God's warning. We took heed. Now, here's the sad part. 
There are many of you walking with the Lord right now, and you don't even have an ear to hear. And if you hear it, you won't take heed. Then you wonder, well, how did this blow up in your face? How did that blow up in your face? Why is there so much drama going on in your life? Why? God told you don't hook up with him. God told you don't hook up with her. But you did it anyway, didn't you? You got hooked on the look. Yeah, the look hooked you. And you said, mm, God's to have it, baby. That's got to be a blessing from God. And you hooked up with it. And now you're reaping the whirlwind. Why? Because you sold to the wind. Mm, you didn't sow into the level of obedience with God. You didn't do what God wanted you to do. You sold to the wind. The Bible says, if you sow to the wind, you will reap the whirlwind. You reap what you sow. So a lot of you wonder, why is all hell breaking loose in your life? Well, some of you, it's a demonic attack. Others of you, it's based solely on the choices you made. Knowing that God had already warned you. And you thought you could take one more chance. Just one more, one more, one more. A little something, something. Just a little something, something. Just, 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 just one more and I'll stop. And that one more was all it took. And God said, no more. Now you're going to pay. I told you the last time. And that was the last time I was going to tell you. Now I'm going to show you. See, we don't fear God. We play them, just like we played our parents, when those of us who were extremely disobedient, extremely disrespectful. You know, the Bible says obey your parents. What's one of the benefits of obeying your parents? Honoring your mother and father. Long life. Yeah, the Bible promises that. And you wonder why so many people don't live out half their lives because you weren't there when they were a kid. You didn't see how they treated their parents. Now, they may have grown up and wised up, but wow, look at all the years they chipped away off of their lives by what they did as a kid. So you think because they're children, they don't have to pay the piper. A child <clears throat> only has to come to that point of reckoning where they recognize good and evil. When a child knows the difference, there's an end there's an, an, an inner something that tells us, an inner thermometer, an inner gauge that lets us know we're doing wrong. You know why I know that? Because kids know how to sneak behind the wall and watch and make sure nobody's looking while they stick their hand in the cookie jar. Mm -hmm. And nobody tells them this. The parents don't sit them that here and give them a course on lying 101. But they know how to lie. It's an innate ability. That's what the Bible means when it says we are born in sin and shaping in iniquity. We know it's in our nature. It's in our DNA to lie, to steal, to sin, to disobey, <clears throat> to get caught up in mischief. We're bent on it. And that's why most of you don't want to walk with the Lord. You don't care what's in his covenant. You don't care about his promises to you. Because you want what your body is hankering for. And you don't want anybody telling you no. Because you think you're grown. I'm going to tell some of you right now. You may be 45. You may be 65, but some of you are still children. You're immature. You're underdeveloped because you haven't exercised self-discipline. You haven't exercised that level of obedience that denies self. That level of obedience that says, no, I can't have it now. The Lord will let me know and I will wait on the Lord 
No, you don't want to wait on the Lord. You don't want to wait on anything. You want what you want now. You got to have it now. Hmm. Now, here's the problem. A lot of you have a very difficult life. Things seem to come hard. You seem to, to get caught up in stuff that, that, that wraps around your neck and seems to be choking the life out of you, like a millstone tied around your neck, pulling you down, drowning you step by step, bit by bit, inch by inch, a continual drowning. Why? Because you're constantly fighting, clawing and scratching for your life, for a moment of joy, for a moment of fun, for a smile, for a laugh. You're looking for some moment of satisfaction. You're looking for peace. You're looking for some kind of contentment, but you can't find it because your soul is empty. Not only is it empty, it is full of torment. Why is it full of torment? <clears throat> Let me tell you this, y'all. The only way you're going to have peace is obeying God. You have to ask the Lord. Yeah, I mean, you have to tell the Lord, I receive Jesus as my Lord and Savior. You have to ask him to forgive you, clean your slate, and fill you with a new nature. Why do you want a new nature, which is the Holy Spirit? Because the Holy Spirit gives you power to resist that flesh of yours that's bent on mischief. You're bent on mischief. We all are. It's the, the only difference between you and me is that I have the Holy Spirit in me. How did I get the Holy Spirit in me? I received Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I asked God to fill me with his Holy Spirit. Ergo, the new nature in me <clears throat> gives me the desire and the power or ability to obey God's ways. So things change. Think about that. Now, as an ex-smoker who was supernaturally delivered from a 15-year, two-pack-a-day habit by God, now, I can smell smoke around the corner, and I can't stand it. It, it stinks to high heaven to me. It's, it's a foul smell. I, I hate it. Now, that's what I want to share with you. The more you obey God, the more you hate sin. Whereas before you loved it, now you hate it. And if you slip, you hate yourself. You're upset with yourself. You're sorry. That's godly sorrow. That's what works repentance. Okay. So you see all these things. What God is trying to say is life ain't going to work for you when you're not living for me. Because I'm the one that puts all the little pieces in place and makes everything line up and time it. And I guide your steps and I protect you from danger, seen and unseen. And I load you with wisdom and I fill your heart with love so you're not living a life full of clamor and confusion and, and, and strife. <laughs> the drama is gone, baby. Because the peace of God is here. The drama has exited the hallway because the love of God has flooded your soul. And you can't help but love people now. The power of God has healed and begun a healing process in your psyche and your emotional scars and all those old wounds and the people you couldn't forgive, you can forgive now. Why? God did it. Yeah. See, God does a work in you that makes living a saved life easy, that makes obe obeying him easy. Easier in some cases, it can still be difficult to obey him. But as soon as you make up your mind, you're going to do it, then it becomes easy to do. It's the war of wanting to do what you want to do versus doing what God wants you to do. That's where it becomes difficult. The made up mind, all of a sudden, now it's easy to do. 
when you walk with the Lord, when you go according to his ways, you will find that you have the favor of God. I mean, you don't want to just barely squeak into heaven. You don't want to barely make it into paradise. No, you want blessings and rewards and God rewards you there, but he also has rewards for you right here. It's beautiful the things he wants to bless you with. He wants you to have the abundant life. That means you're full of joy. You're full of peace. Your heart is flooded with love. You, you get along with people. Your scars are being healed. You're not so jumpy and edgy and frustrated and angry. You don't have the anger issues you used to have. You don't have the control issues you used to have. What did I say? You don't have all that because the Holy Spirit is smoothing out the rough edges. He's softening you up. He's tenderizing you. He's sweetening you. And as you walk with the Lord, you get in his word, you see his characteristics. You learn to fear the Lord more and more. That's a motivation too. So my point is you want to be on God's good side, don't you? Now, for those of you who don't believe in God, I'm not even talking to you. It doesn't even matter. I'm talking to those who know there is a God. Those of you who know, yeah, yeah, you know there's a God. You have a certain reverence for him, but you haven't made that commitment. You haven't taken that step. You haven't taken the leap. Why? Because this is calling your name. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is calling your name too. He's knocking at the door of your heart. Now, for those of you, and I ask you to let him in. If you can't say anything else but Lord Jesus, come into my heart. If that's all you know to say, Lord, forgive me. Make sure you ask him also to fill, fill me, Lord, with your Holy Spirit, because I need help. Admit you need help. Admit you're weak. Admit you're broken and ask God to put you back together again. All right. Now, let me go on and, and read. For those of you who are bent on doing it your way. Listen to what God says. I'm going to finish this and I'm going to move on to Psalms 105 and we're going to wrap it up. All right. Now, let's go to verse 13. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge and their honorable men are famished and the multitude dried up with thirst. That's emptiness, y'all. You're empty. You feel like a dead man walking. All right, 14. Therefore hath hell enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure, in other words, without limit, limitless, and their glory, their multitude, and their pomp, and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. Now, there's a hell here on earth, too. And we're not just talking about the literal hell, literal eternity. Let's deal with the here and now. Some of you who can't get rid of that, that addiction, whether it be the thing you shoot in your arm, that stuff you snort up your nose, that little thing you huff and puff on and get high on, or what's in that bottle. Some of you are hooked on children. You just can't stop molesting and messing up children. Some of you only want sex if you're taking it by force. Rape is your high. The control is your high. Some of you are narcissistic and you got that Jezebel spirit. And as long as you're browbeating and oppressing and beating people down and criticizing them and making them feel like a piece of dust under your feet, 
that's when you feel like you're something. But even when you do that, you still got that itch you can't scratch. Why? Because only the, that satisfaction you really want only comes from God. Mm -hmm. Some of you, you don't feel happy. Hmm. Listen to this. <laughs> you don't feel happy unless you're sitting on the internet working your body parts off the porn that you're looking at because it's an addiction. You're hooked on porn like you're hooked on crap. See, and some of you are hooked on gambling. Whatever you're hooked on, whatever you're, whether it's food, sweets, munchies, whatever it is, whatever you're hooked on, baby, it's got you by the nose. And it takes you wherever it wants to take you. And there you go following instead of asking God to set you free so you and God can go in and possess that land he's got for you. Go in and possess your life. Take control of it. Create a new destiny other than the one that Satan planned for you. Because Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus came that you might have life and that more abundantly. Well, which one would you rather have? All right, moving right along. Let's go to Psalms 105 real quick. We're going to see God renewing, re reaffirming his covenant. All right. Mm -hmm. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon him. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing songs unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Glory ye in his holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. Remember his marvelous work. Women, I got to stop because this is going through my mind and I think it's a warning to some of you. I believe God wants to warn you. I got to stop right here. Please listen, listen, listen. Warning, warning, warning to those who call good evil and evil good, who will call those people who are trying to live for God, those people who are trying to do right, and you are determined, you are bent to make them do wrong with you, to join you in your mischief, to join you in your sin. You're trying to control them and make them do what you want them to do, even if it goes diametrically opposed to their own conscience, even if they're crying so hard because they don't want to do it. You're going to make them do it. You better watch it, baby, because God's got a bill that you never want to have to pay. Okay, moving right along. I'm, I'm here now. Back to Psalms 105. Wow. Okay. Woo. All right. Let's drop down to verse 4. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face evermore. Remember his marvelous works that he has done, his wonders and the judgments of his mouth. O oh, ye seed of Abraham, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He hath remembered his covenant forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations, which covenant he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac, and confirmed it, confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant, saying unto thee, unto thee will I give the land of Canaan, the lot of your inheritance. When they were but a few men in number, yea, very few and strangers in it. When they went from one nation to another, from one kingdom to another people, he suffered no man to do them wrong. Yea, he reproved kings for their sake, saying, Touch not mine anointed and do my prophets no harm. Listen, God has promises, precious promises, but they're conditional. They are conditional. He's not going to bless the backslider. 
Think about that. He's not going to forgive the unforgiving. In other words, you don't forgive them, he ain't going to forgive you. Just break it down. Make it easy for you. You want to browbeat people and you expect God to treat you kindly? Huh? You want to hold back help? You know you could help somebody. But no, you want to favor your little buddies over here. You know they're struggling, but they're not your race. They're not your people. They don't speak your language. So in your mind, you think, oh, forget them. I don't even want to be bothered with them. Go on and get on welfare. I'm going to take care of mine. You think God's not watching that? That's called oppression, baby. And God has an oppression that you will know that you're being pressed down. Mm -hmm. That you're being stomped on. When God gets through with your life, you're going to wish you could find those people that you denied help from. Mm -hmm. See, God doesn't play. It looks like because he's so merciful and long-suffering, because he's so patient, because he's so kind. Yeah, that you're going to get away with it. You're going to do what you got to do and you're going to, yeah. Mm -mm. You never escape. There's not one thing you've done in this life that God is not aware of. So, if you want to partake in this covenant right here, Psalms 105, it's time for a turnaround. It's time for an about face. It's time for a change. That's what repentance means. Let me break that word down and then we're going to close. Repentance is not saying, I'm sorry. I used to say that all the time to avoid a whooping, but I wasn't sorry. I was sorry I got caught. But godly sorrow is when it breaks your heart that you've broken God's. I'm so, oh Lord, 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 I gave in. Oh, please. I was wrong. I can't say I'm sorry for what I did because I knew I wanted to do that. But Lord, please have mercy on me. Help me, Lord. I'm, I'm drawn to that. I'm weak in that area. Help me. Have mercy on me. And you mean it. And not only do you mean it, but you do everything in the world that's in your power to avoid that crap. Even if when they call, you don't answer the phone. You block them. So you don't even know they're trying to reach you. You do whatever it takes. They come knocking at your door. They ring your doorbell. You ignore it. You do whatever it takes. You call a minister. Pray for me right now. They're at the door. Just stay on the phone with me till they go. You do what it takes. And after a while, when you start to experience freedom, real freedom, all those little sacrifices you did trying to obey God, trying to deny yourself, it's going to be worth it, baby. And then as you start to come out of that stream that's pulling you back and you get into the river of God that's flowing you in his will, and it's not a struggle anymore to live for him, you will find the freedom the satisfaction, the joy, the peace, you will say, it's worth it. I haven't lost a thing. Look at all I've gained by yielding myself to your will, Lord. Doing everything your way. <laughs> I'm a whole new me. I'm not a dead man walking again. I'm alive. Full of love, full of joy, full of peace and satisfaction. And I've got a purpose. Hmm. Mm. Anyway, I'm going to leave that alone. But know that there comes a point in your life when God will say, time, go in and possess your land. See that right there? I got that for you. Got that for you. Got that for you. Go after it, baby. I'm with you. I'm for you. 
and I'll work it out. I'll go ahead of you, make the rough places smooth and the crooked places straight. God bless you as you make your decision to come out of chaos and enter into the promised land. Amen. God bless you. Oh,